Good morning, Diaz, Peralta. Captain, you're smiling. It's very weird, like seeing a turtle out of its shell. I'm happy. Our drug task force was a success, and today I get to watch my nemesis, Madeline Wunsch, drape a medal around my neck. Also, we clean up the streets. Yeah, sure, that's good, too. So, I've been planning how to zing Madeline when she puts the medal on. I have the perfect line. Wunsch time is over. So, it's, it's a play on lunchtime. Yes, devastating burn, sir. But you know what would really show her is if you said nothing at all. Oh, interesting, interesting. Let, <laughs> let Madeline know she's not even worth my staying up all night crafting zingers. Wunsch time took you all night? Trust me, turn the other cheek, which I recently learned is about faces and not butts, but works either way. Yes, I should be the bigger person. It shouldn't be hard, given that Madeline's not technically a person. For meritorious service, the NYPD bestows this award on detectives Rosa Diaz, Jake Peralta, and Captain Raymond Holt. Raymond. Madeline. You won. Go ahead and gloat, you toad. Thank you for this honor, Deputy Chief. Oh. OK. You're welcome. Lunch time is over. Boom, did it. <laughs> Had it both ways. No regrets. So again, your alibi is a mysterious stranger handed you the gun, made you put your prints on it, robbed the store, and then hid the gun in your underpants. Well, yeah, if you say it like that, it don't sound believable. Oh, hey, Captain, did you get my report on the Finley murder? Oh, uh, yeah, I looked it over. Nice work. Good. Thanks, Dad. Why is everyone staring at me? You just called Captain Holt Dad. You said, thanks, Dad. What? No, I didn't. I said, thanks, man. Do you see me as a father figure, Peralta? No. If anything, I see you as a bother figure, because you're always bothering me. Hey. Show your father some respect. I didn't call him dad. No, 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 no. Jacob. I take it as a compliment. It's not a big deal. I called Vivian mom once, and she's my fiance. Guys, jump on that. Boyle has psychosexual issues. Old news. But you calling Holt daddy. Hey, daddy is not on the table here. But you did call him dad, dude. You shut up. You've done nothing but lie since you got here. All right, all right. I was lying about the holdup. But the dad thing, that happened. Aha! He admitted that his alibi was a lie. It was a trap, all part of my crazy, devious plan. I believe you. Thank you. Son, you want to talk about it later over a game of catch? I'd like that. And so concludes this year's Secret Santa drawing. Just a quick reminder of the rules. $48 limit, no perishable items, and no homemade massage coupons, Hitchcock. Fine, then everyone will have to pay full price for them. Oh, Captain, I would like a $40 gift card to any restaurant that serves Nachos. I don't have you, Peralta. Not only do I know that you do indeed have me, but I also know who everyone else has. That's not possible. Perhaps not for ordinary men such as yourself, Jeffords, but for the brilliant mind of Detective Jacob Sherlock Peralta, I legally changed my name. It's quite simply elementary. For you see, Amy made a face I only recognize from our bedroom, which means that she has Captain Holt. Charles has Terry. His eyes keep shifting over to him. No, they don't. Terry looked disgusted, which means he has Hitchcock. Rosa didn't draw a name, nor did she put one in. She doesn't want to participate. Never do. Hitchcock moves his mouth when he reads, and he quite clearly said Charles. I did get Charles. Scully has Amy. He's holding his paper name side out. Oh, he's good. And I have Scully, which means Captain Holt has me. I'll be taking that gift card. Daddy loves nachos. Should we draw the names again and leave Jake out? Yeah! yeah. No! Oh, Sherlock, what's a present? I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. You can start the meeting now. The meeting is over, you're late. You missed roll call and the tutorial on using the new copier. Six years, and no matter how hard I try, I still can't get you to understand the importance of being punctual. Maybe you should just give up and accept me for who I am? No, I will break you right now. Ow. While you were out being tardy, I was hard at work devising a special punishment. I've crafted an intricate, personal high five with everyone in this office except you. What? But you hate high fives. Yes, every minute of it was hell, but it'll be worse for you. Squad dismissed. <laughs> Goodbye, Diaz. Salute into a fanny waggle. Goodbye, Boyle. Oh, the snake charmer. Goodbye, Jeffords. That's the butt bump. Goodbye, Santiago. Double fist bump, reverse explosion into a Pete Townsend strum. <sighs> All right, that was terrible, but it's over now, and I made it through. Goodbye, Leonard from Xerox. What? No, no, no. The copy guy? Interesting. Very, very interesting. Guys, Captain Holt has no pants on. Um, 
What? He has no pants on is what? Here are the facts. At 11.55 a.m., Captain Holt walked past us holding a hot bowl of soup. At 12.03 p.m., I heard him yell, Ouch! Then, at 12.07, he called Gina into his office. She entered, holding nothing. One minute later, she left holding an opaque bag. Captain Holt's pants were in that bag. His knees are in the breeze. He's in his undies. That evidence is circumstantial. Oh, so you guys want visual confirmation? Not no. really. Done. Hey, Captain, I just need you to sign something at my desk real quick. Just leave it on the couch. Dismissed. OK. Sir, you're going to freak. Yo-Yo Ma is in the precinct, and he's giving out autographs. Yo-Yo Ma is on tour in Australia right now. How would you know that? Sir, I'm choking on a lozenge. I'm going to die. I got to drink. No, no, no. Stop it. I swallowed it. I swallowed it. It's fine. Hey, hey. I made you another bowl of soup since you spilled yours earlier, but you're gonna have to come over here to get it. All right, Peralta, I'm sick of you wasting time. So yes, I spilled some minestrone on my pants and I'm sitting in my underwear. Happy? Yes! Ugh. Sir, I need you to sign off on- Look at us! Just three people with pants on having a normal conversation. Yep, no story here. Wait for it, wait for it. 9.01, Amy Santiago is officially late for the first time ever. All right, let's do this. Who's got theories? Uh, alarm didn't go off. All three alarms, all with battery backup? Come on, who wants to take this seriously? Ooh, she was taken in her sleep. That's what I'm talking about. Super dark, Boyle, but way more plausible than the Sarge's idiotic alarm clock theory. I bet she tucked herself into bed too tight and got stuck. Maybe she fell into another dimension where she's interesting. It's 9 a.m. Why is no one working? Amy Santiago is a few minutes late, and we're all trying to guess why. I like to play. I'd say she's in line at the bank. This is fun. It is fun, but you're all wrong. She clearly slipped through a subway grate and is having terrible sex with a mole man. There she is, Amy. Where have you been? We've been worried sick. Do you care to explain yourself? I'm just 70 seconds late. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Santiago, you will tell us, and you will tell us now. There was a problem at the bank. Hot damn! Guys, I have a great idea for a prank. Before Holt comes in, I'm going to put ink on the podium where he puts his hands. I don't think you'll fall for that. I did. How? I haven't even opened this yet. I guess it's unrelated. Captain Holt hates pranks. This is going to backfire, man. Ugh, fine. I'll tone it down. I'll. Move his podium a foot to the left. What? He'll be so angry. OK, five inches. Five? Three? Three. One? One? All right, I'll move it a half inch. Fine. It's your funeral. Oh, my god. Worst prank ever. So stupid, Holt's not even going to notice. Good morning. You guys, the, the podium is. <laughs> 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 You're crazy! How did you pull this off? Are you ready for this one? Dottie's daughter Anne is getting divorced. Hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. You know, we should fix her up with Bernice's son. What's his name? The doctor. Oh, Vince. And he's not a doctor, he's a pharmacist. Although that might appeal to Anne. Pop, pop. <laughs> You are such a cracker. Forget Ann. Who should we fix him up with, huh? Oh, now, Sal, you know I'm still getting over the tragedy loss of my wife. She was such a strong female woman with nice, heavy breasts. Who's that? Oh, that's my neighbor. Hey, Larry. Oh, hey. Greb. Greg. Ah, that was it. I'm not sure why I have so much trouble remembering, probably because our relationship is so casual. Mm -hmm. Morning, ladies. Hi. Uh, do a lap without me. I need to talk to Larry about an issue with our shared fence. Larry, I need to talk to you about an issue with our shared fence. Yes, I also need to discuss this shared fence issue with you. OK, they're out of earshot. Why are you up so early? No reason, just excited to face a new day. Oh, because ever since we've been down here, you've been a little depressed. Have I? <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't eat the burrito. <laughs> okay, fine. I may have had a teensy bit of trouble adjusting when we first got here for like six teensy little months, but I took your advice and I got a job. Doing what? I sell ATVs now. Huh? Well, the truth is these little babies sell themselves. They're super fun and they're a lot safer than you might think. 
if you're standing next to one. If you're driving it, it's actually much more dangerous than you could possibly imagine. Well, our job is good. I know being stuck down here in Florida isn't ideal, but we need to make the best of it. In fact, I'm applying for a promotion at my new job. Ah, very nice. And if all goes well, tonight you might be neighbors with Greg Stickney, assistant manager. Very double noise. Well, I'm off to work. <clears throat> you might want to stand back. You're kind of in the blast zone here. Don't want to forget the strap. Safety first. That's what I was doing. OK. Whoa. Whoa, what's with the cast? I sprained my wrist. Oh, no, what happened? Don't worry about it. I'm fine. Yeah, geez, Amy, back off. Leave the guy alone. All right, huddle up. Everybody, bring it in, bring it in. So he wouldn't say what happened, which can only mean one thing. He's in a fight club. No, he did it doing something he's embarrassed by, like smiling. Only question is, how do you hurt your arm smiling? Could be a sports injury. I sprained my wrist in college playing field hockey. Men's field hockey? Yeah. It's much more violent than the women's game. We're not allowed to wear anything that protects our breasts. Attention, everyone. I can hear you speculating about the nature and origin of my injury from my office. I tripped over an uneven sidewalk. I did not think it was relevant to your jobs, the jobs which you should all be doing right now. Get to work. Do you want to know how I actually hurt my wrist? Yes. I was hula hooping. Kevin and I attend a class for fitness and for fun. Oh my God. I've mastered all the moves. The pizza toss, the tornado, the scorpion, the oopsie doodle. Why are you telling me this? Because no one will ever believe you. No, no. You sick son of a bitch. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today to answer an age-old question. Right. What's Amy's deal? Is she single? No, we're dating. Come on. The question is, who here does the best impression of Captain Raymond Holt? You will be judged on voice, body language, and overall lack of flair. Everyone will perform the same scenario. Captain Holt eating a marshmallow for the very first time. Let the Holt off begin. What is this glutinous monstrosity before me? The sugar in this is quite sweet. Ooh! <laughs> That's your Holt impression? I could hear him doing that. Looks like a sticky pillow. I don't care for it. Classical music. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? What are you doing? Captain, hey, nothing. Just eating some marshmallows. Care for one? Marshmallow. <laughs> I knew it! <laughs>